Hello, this is Pigsy doing another video and um, I, do, I talk about a few different things so so let's see um, yeah I mean at first I started talking about myself in relation to dealing with trauma and other things like things like that and um, go into Roger Lo yoga as well so I've been doing this yoga it's heart yoga and it's quite useful it's given me a chance to meet new people um, and it's a very subtle technique of just having a relationship with your heart. You don't have to visualise it. That would be the more in tune with your third eye when you're doing things like that. And um, which is fine, it's up to you really. But the technique, I guess, is just sensing where your heart is and that energy and uh, making good use of that. So, I mean, once you can connect with your heart, um, you feel certain benefits. And um, I know if you can go through some stuff, you might want to clear some stuff out of your mind. So there's clearance, there's clearance techniques, but they don't require visualization. There was talk about um, today about certain points around your heart, and they can relate to areas where you might want to clear it, like. Um, excessive um, sort of sexual desire or um, fear, fear and worldly concerns or something so where you ache in your heart I mean I've had some guilt actually I was trying to figure out you know why do you ache in certain points of your body and I think there's some guilt and guilt is quite difficult can be difficult it's a poison really and um, I think you just have to accept that some things they're not your fault and um, they're done now and that sort of thing and um, you know sometimes there's no way forward it's just one of the things um, so yeah it was useful it's nice making new connections so I went over sort of uh, Henley where this chap is and it was useful useful little class so I mean definitely if you're recovering from a situation it could be any kind of emotional trauma you know it doesn't have to be that you, you fell out with a friend or something I never want to talk to you again <laughs> But, um, or anything like that, it, it could be completely different, it could be anything really. Or it could be just a bit low in yourself, or you want to learn something new, or you know, improve your own sort of mental health or whatever. So yeah, it's pretty good, it's pretty good for that. Uh, but it's, it's, I think sometimes with sort of emotional trauma and aches and stuff, they just linger. I don't know what the, the point is um, of them. Maybe there's some lessons to be learned, or some other, something of sort of connection. So it's just one of them things really and then just regularly clear that energy point where it aches just meditate on that point clear that trauma away sweep it away so that's the probably the best way of doing stuff like that um what else has happened i had some, some strange stuff with a dream actually i had i might come back to something other stuff i mentioned in a different way in a minute but yeah i had a dream and in a dream uh, uh, being i was asking me what's the name of my crow now i don't have a pet crow uh in the past briefly i had a, a contact with a crow and that was that was due to um basically i was going to go on holiday i was helping my sister load her boot up she put the boot lid up and i went to get a suitcase and then i heard um i heard a noise from her and then she said, oh, it won't go, it won't go. And I went out there and I looked at it, I thought, what's that? And there's a bird. She said, the bird, it won't go off the, off the boot of the car. I stuck there, you know, what's going on? And um, when she went to sort of shoe it with her hands, it tried to land on them. So I put my hand out, I landed on my hand. It was actually quite tame. I think there was a fear, like, it would just go, like, into your, attack your eyes and stuff like that. My mum says, yes, they are dangerous. If, if you get, get a fight on with a crow, it will probably have your eyes out. So if it did turn nasty, it would be quite a, you know, it wouldn't be a very nice situation. And I think when I was doing some of my missing research, I came across a, a case where a guy had got drunk and he'd gone to sit on a hill somewhere. So he's gone to where a lot of crows were hanging out, and they got ticked off with him. He's drunk, and they've just um, they've just attacked him. So I don't know if he was drunk with his eyes open. You know, some people fall asleep with their eyes open, and. Um, 
But anyway, I think someone said they heard some screams or heard some noise. When I went up there, they just found him dead with no eyes. He had his eyes removed. So, yeah, so I had this crow for a, for a bit and um, I fed the crow um, for when on holiday and we kept him in the shed. We didn't want to sort of run out because he wouldn't know how to look after himself. There's cats and other things. And I said to just make sure he gets fed. So my dad fed him and I've fed him and he was sort of overfed to be honest. So when I came back within a week, I did try to do some kind of work with him. Um, but eventually because he was overfed, he just flew off really. Uh, he did try to dive bomb me slightly. I, he, 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 he was looking around, he saw a bird flying over the top of him. He realised, well, this guy can't fly and that's a bird. I think he had an idea that something's not quite right. And, um, you know, he, he was disciplined. The food kept him under control, but when he was overfed, he had no reason to have that control system in place. And so he just, um, he just took flight and went off somewhere. So only thing is, when he comes to food, he might be harassing humans for it if he didn't know, he doesn't learn how to, um, to, to sort of fend or feed for himself. So I don't know, see what, what would have happened for him, I don't know. Um, that's the really only other crow, and yet I think that's the only other thing, that's, that's the only pet I've had remotely to a crow. And um, there was a, um, basically I, it was a project, I was thinking I wouldn't mind using some sort of like um, ravens or crow feathers and um, this crow got hit by a car, I wasn't there, but his family of crows were crying, making a lot of cry noises and so on and there was a sort of crow on the ground. I mentioned this guy that was there and you know, if he, if he, it sounds a bit disgusting but if he could bag it up and then I did my like taxi dermis thing on it so I removed the feathers and other stuff and, um, and got rid of the rest. But, and I used, and sort of washed them and stuff, but the DNA was in there so I could use it for some of my experiments and I put it to organ and things like that. And um, so that spiritual energy. And I asked, also I asked the dead crow if it was okay to, to use its energy and, and, and basically my intentions behind it would be sort of connected to these other energy forces. And it didn't really have a problem with that because it realized it passed away and that I was gonna sort of in some way given a, a chance to connect and heal and if I could heal use the DNA of the crow in some of my experiments that it also can affect the family of crows. I was using um, some rife frequencies and what happens is relatives and things related to the DNA also can benefit from it. So yeah it's a part of my experiment and that was really only only you know, sort of stuff for the crow. So anyway so this entity basically asked me what was my pet what was my um, pet crow and so it was quite uh, weird why well, I would want to know this information and it just didn't fit into the dream like what you know I, I mean I know I'm asleep um, but it was quite a lot oh, for fuck's sake what are you doing daft taxi driver flashes me so he can overtake in my lane I don't think that really how it really works um, so um, yeah so that's one of the odd things and um, so some of the stuff is sort of, well basically I want to get myself back to the way I was before and I'm alright in myself but the stuff, sometimes stuff flicks through your brain. I had something where it triggered um, because it raised a particular person, let's put it that way, got pulled into a current sort of conversation. Most of the time you have to ignore these things and, and that's one of the things is to remove any reminder of the person you cannot move on if you've got triggers and things they bring it all back into the foreground and I mean I don't need to do this video so I'm probably not exactly doing myself m m loads of favours however I'm not going to mention names and when I'm talking about stuff I'm not thinking about the person or anything like that I'm more dealing with how I'm feeling at the moment and um, also what I've done about it and stuff because that might help somebody uh, Matt, there's a thing called Man Sutra it's got some uh, brilliant videos um, on YouTube, a lot of motivational stuff, you know, sort of, it's very down to earth, straight talk sort of stuff, and it's quite useful, you know, basically say, you know, stop, stop trying to be like a dad and, and get it in your head, and if, because sometimes, see the thing is, if you're in a relationship with women, I've heard it with a few women, is that they might, there's, um, some of them are quite, have some, uh, possibly narcissistic qualities in that or something. The idea that a man fulfills some type of role and in some pseudo form that he might do that and so he becomes groomed by certain things and, and so, I, don't, I don't mind being kind but some of it takes the mickey sometimes you know. 
and um, I mean classical things for um, what women might do. If you like them, I know you like them, they might give you like their leftover food and things, or they might give you something that's gone off. They might, they might even give you things that are just a load of junk, they just want to get rid of it. And they've got, they, they, they can't part of it because it's got some value, but when they realise it's got some sort of value to you, they want it back. So it's a bit of a head game, so you want me to take something off your hands. But if you think it's good, I've got to give it back to you. And it's really, you know, it's like, uh, what? And, and to be honest with Blood, I just give them, you know, if you want to give, give a present or treat, just do it. It's not, it's, not, um, it's not really massive debate. But I guess it's a bit obvious if you like someone, you know, they say, oh, do you want this, do you want that? And you go, yes, yeah, that's fine, yeah, cheers for that. You know, <laughs> well, it's not quite so um, affirming, but, you know, there's no sort of, um, not really any major resistance to it. And I don't mind a bit of the male banter, but you've just got to be aware that you might be vulnerable to getting manipulated by people. And, you know, and sometimes I might do something horrible to you, you just ignore it. But you need to really think about it. They're just we're playing some sort of a weird game, really. And they may have created the situation without realising it, but they like the games, but they might not like you getting involved at an emotional level. I don't know, it depends on the person. So I'm just talking generally, I'm not talking about anything in the present. Some sort of, um, I don't know, some sort of impact from that. Um, so yeah, so you get, you get a lot of them mind games. I think it's important just to be yourself. That's often we get into things, blokes, where you don't. You might offset your character, depending on what you want from this person. Um, so yeah, it's a definitely good. He's got definitely got some good, good motivational videos. There's other things to look at as well that possibly with people that you care about, people that you put on pedestals, that you um, sometimes put them as perfect, and your brain just chosen to ignore all the, all the negatives there. And it's the same with your memory. Your memory will constantly keep creating these versions of stuff that makes you look good or makes them look good. You know, you either put yourself in a positive position or a negative position to how you feel. And so it's constantly rewriting it. So basically a part of your brain is constantly lying to the other. It's like going, yeah, this is this what really happened. And it's like, uh, I don't know, if it was it like that. And depending on how you feel, how that version goes out, you know, like, um, if, if two people went on a date, right, and say the guy really enjoyed himself and the woman didn't, they, their version of that night would be slightly different. If you could record it, you could record it outside of the box, and he was happy and everything else. And then you'd have her version, like thinking, oh yeah, he just seems to talk a lot about himself, or whatever, the, it comes out their version. And then a the bloke's version of saying, she really likes me. And <laughs> it would be just so, so different. So it's interesting that. So that's one perspective. And also not using the past as any kind of... A lot of people will say, oh no, you know, this happened to me, that happened. The thing is, if you make a bad choice, you'll just live with it. Say, well, I made that choice, it was, bad. it was my mistake. And that's it, just take it. Otherwise, you can't really move on if you're saying, oh well, they did this to me, they did that to me. But you made that choice. You went with a person that wasn't very good for you. Because maybe you weren't in a good framework, or, or you're attracted to something that's not very healthy. And so you have to look at that and think, you know, what is a healthy person? What should I be looking for? And then get that sorted out, really. Um, so, so I'm getting a swing of things back. I'll get back to my... Um, I'm going to do some um, medical organ. So forgive me if I bore you with that stuff. It's just, it's in the present, it's in my mind. And I think it's worth talking about some bits and bobs. Um, I don't think there's anything yoga-ish I can tell you any more about at the moment. Uh, just that it's... Um, there's a lot more to that type of yoga. There's lots of different yogas around meditation, meditating on, ch on chakra points, and you know, there's ones to do with uh, your third eye, and um, there's ones just to do plainly with your heart, and then also whatever experience you bring in the ring. So that's that's important. So anyway, moving on to organ. Um, I'm currently I'll be making some pieces of organ. I'll be making some medical organ. So um, you know, I have sugar in it. Um, and I put some other sort of herbs and things, things that will um, basically enhance it to have like maybe it's anti-inflammatory. You know, there might be C CBD stuff in it and CBD, CBD, CBD stuff, and you know, it's sort of some hemp in it and all sorts of interesting things. Um, I do have actually. Um, I do have a magic mushroom, but I don't know if I put that inside it. I could do, it might look quite nice, the colour. Uh, what I should do is, 
so the bottom part of the organ, create that as proper organ, and then and then the top part of it, make it into a kind of theme or a picture. You know, like you look at a snow globe, and you see certain things in there. So maybe I should try to do that. I have a little mushroom, and maybe I should stick some little figures or something on it, and stuff like that. And then um, put a few little things, like a little coil underneath it or something. And... Um, then put the resin around it. The thing is, the problem with the resin though is that it can get really hot and you, you might end up cooking it. So, you know, cooked mushroom, it's not really the same effect as you want if it's got a nice shiny thing to it. So, you really got to make a kind of resin that's a slow, slow setting. Or you could put a resin just, you could put something just over the mushroom itself as a kind of shield, as a bit of a heat shield. Uh, but you might not, like, you put like varnish on it or something, you know, something that would protect it at some level before you stick it in there. I don't really understand how traffic lights, they, they change for like five seconds, they turn red and then they turn back into a, a thing. I guess it's pretty set to pick up with traffic at night. Um, so yeah, so that would be interesting to make some medical bits. Uh, I might send them off actually to some local place anyway, I might give them away as a present. <laughs> bit of an experiment. Here we go. Have some, have some little org on. Uh, it'd be nice. Yeah, it'd be nice to do that. And, um, and then take it from there. I mean, I was going to make some um, uh, almost, almost like the powder you take, you know, monotonic. I was going to add some, um, add some, um, basically s some um, hemp I was going to put into that. Make sure. We'll have to see, really. It's, um, I've got my, um, I've got my uh, chugger um, almost the wet, but the wet's not really selling, so what I want to do is dry it up and put it into a powder. It's probably a lot easier that way, and then it takes about a month though to dry out. And sell that as a powder. Or I can add that powder, see, I sprinkle the powder and put it with the organ, and it might create all sorts of things. And also making funky colours as well, because it'd be nice to, what you do want to do is get a slight coloration in the. Um, to go in with the, uh, when making the organ and the resin, make it a little bit more interesting, which I think is important. I'm trying to think of anything else. Trying to get hit by a bloody car. Um, that's it, really. I think that's really what I need to do to set, set these projects up and focus on them. Uh, you've also got um, this hemp plant, so all, um, basically they only last about a year, so this thing's died. I'm not sure about one of them. One of them looks like it could potentially be still alive. It's just like in some hibernation state or something. So I don't know. So I'm going to leave it a little bit. But I'll probably chop them up and put them into the, um, the both of them actually. I wouldn't mind the all gone. But I wouldn't mind doing an extraction on it and trying to get the... Um, get some organic um, qualities out of it. So, I mean, you know about uh, THC and um, THCA, the acid. Um, so, it's carbon, carbonized, isn't it? One with the acid, one without. So, um, it may be different if I put an oxide into the mix. You might get a carbon dioxide compound or something very different. It depends what it takes from that structure. Um, so once you've once I've integrated it with some type of um, ormus, it won't be an acid anyway. It'd be pretty powerful, strong alkaline, and so the alkaline may be completely different. Oh, thank you. And um, yeah, so it'd be something different. I need to be careful, obviously. I don't know. Yeah, it can't have any serious problems with that because it'd be too weak, and plus it's something that's normally organic anyway. And, um, well, it's all ta I'll take it from there, because I did some similar thing with the ayahuasca in the past. I did some extraction method on it, uh, which is quite interesting, and I sold it to someone. And well, I quite liked it. <laughs> don't know. They didn't complain. You know, they were quite like, wow, this is good stuff. So, um, that's fine. They said, it's my, uh, my spirit plant. So they're up for that. So yeah. Anyway, I hope this wasn't too um, boring. It's a sort of general update, touching upon a few different things, and um, 
I need to really get my head back into making stuff and doing stuff. It's just that at the moment, there's been a situation with money which I've resolved, which I'm just getting ahead of the game on that one. Um, I'm busy, busy with work, busy, busy with some qualification, and um, just sorting out some headspace, and then I just can sort out creative space, which is a lot better. Um, probably only other thing to touch as well, if you're kind of quite a sensitive guy, quite artistic, you may like to, oh, you may like to um, create and fix things, and sometimes you come across people and you might try to do the same. It doesn't work. Um, I mean, you're not going to recreate someone, but you support them creatively, and if you try to fix them, all that happens is you invest lots of your emotional self into the person trying to do something that that they don't want to happen. They, if they're the way they are, they're the way they are. That's the, the honest thing. Accept people how they are. I think you can, you know, say, right, well, I can, there may be some things I can help you with, but let me know if that's what you want or what you want, basically, and then I'll fit in with that. And I think that's probably the best you can do. I wouldn't get too involved, because all that happens is it'll backfire. And it's a bit like trying to, you know, if you're a bit upbeat and a bit sort of positive, is that you might try and cheer people up or stuff like that. It's probably the worst thing. Just well, I think you can have a laugh with them. Have a find a middle ground. Have a laugh and stuff like that. Uh, and that's it really. Anyway, this is Pig sign off. Have a great one. And we do so.